been called for termination of the United States Supreme, the, the, the supreme land of our nation, the United States Constitution. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. What's wrong, everyone? Jeremy here from the recording. A whole lot of liberals, far leftists, seem to be denying the facts, denying the science of polling data in the last couple of days. The meltdown over a single poll shows you that there is widespread panic. Look, when Trump won the election in 2016, I don't believe he ever led in the polls at all, at least in aggregate. Um, in 2020, I'm almost certain he almost never led, or maybe only at the beginning, because this day in history, he was back, you know, down by eight points in the polls. Then in 2024, running again now, he sits at like he's down 1.8. Now, I do believe Trump did lead in the polls when after the Joe Biden debate, I think. Um, I can't remember back that far, but I'm pretty sure. But a new poll came out now um, when combined with a Nate Silver poll has the left absolutely positively melting down. First, let's look at this one. OK, uh, this is the New York Times Siena poll, which is well respected. Donald Trump has surged into the lead over Kamala Harris. And, and according to a national poll released over the weekend, um, ahead of the critical debate night. Now, I'm not surprised at all um, that he's making up ground because what are you, are you even voting for? Donald Trump surged in the lead over Kamala Harris. The results in the New York Times Siena polling show Trump ahead of the vice president by a single point sparked fury from pundits and critics who called it fake. What? Are they denying the, are they, oh no. That's like step one into then saying that, you know, not believing the final numbers. The poll of just 1,700 registered voters showed that candidates tied in seven battleground states that will decide the election. It showed that the honeymoon Harris has enjoyed since President Joe Biden dropped out of the race is over. Liberals are in complete meltdown after the first major poll, uh, after, or for, over the first major poll after the Democrat National Convention last month, put Donald Trump ahead of Kamala Harris. The tiny one point lead falls, of course, within the New York Times Siena College's poll margin of error, but the former president squeaking ahead with just two months until the election has Democrats up in arms. Some pollsters have suggested the Harris honeymoon phase is ending after just over a month in the race, but some claim it could just be a blip, while others, members of the party, are dismissing one of the most reputable and respected major polling authorities. Wow, denying much? One self-proclaimed recovering political pollster and election nerd wrote on Twitter, we'll wait for more data to see if this is a blip or the start of a reversion, but the New York Times Siena is an excellent pollster. I mean, look, again, Trump never led in 2016 and won the election. I think the idea in 2024 of like the secret Trump voter, which is kind of how they explained, you know, people would lie in the polls or people would, you know, just not say on the polls, say they were undecided, but they already knew they were going to vote for Trump. That, that was probably real in 2016, but there, there really can't be that many of those left in 2024. So I, I don't think that the polls are that wild but you always have to drill down and see how they sampled like if trump's up by one point and the new york times oversampled democrats then it's even worse you see matthew Downs wrote sisters brothers another data moment don't sweat the new york times poll it is inaccurate first the average of three or seven or eight credible polls in the past few weeks show harris with a three-point lead second the new york times poll is four or five points more GOP than every other credible poll. That may be true. That, that might be true. We can find out right now because I am here to 
you know, share the data. So here we have real clear politics. Only number that I ever look at for, for polling data is right here, the Harris plus 1.3, because that is the aggregate, meaning this is the, for the period of 8.22 to 9.6. So this is, this poll data is already three days old, minimum, pre-debate. You see a pretty steady diet in late August. Harris plus three, plus one, plus one, plus four, plus one. Okay. Harris plus one ain't that great. Um, now, if we look, Rasmussen gave him Trump plus one. Emerson plus two. Harvard Harris has him tied. If we look at the New York Times poll, oh, they want to pay, they want me to pay money. Okay. You always have to understand how they polled right? So you look down, you scroll all the way to the bottom and here it is. Anytime you want to understand a poll and how much, how accurate it is first understand that there's always a margin of error, which this poll's margin of error is not reported, but I assume it has one like the Harvard Harris poll that shows them tied as a 2.1 point margin of error. So Harris could be up two, or Trump could be up two, or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Here it is. They interviewed 1,700 registered voters from the country, September 3rd to September 6th. So this data is, is already week old. Time Siena are conducted by telephone using live interviews in both English and Spanish. 96% of respondents were contacted on a cell phone for this poll. Voters are selected from a survey of registered voters. This list contains information on demographic characteristics, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... Let's see. To ensure that the results reflect entire voting population, not just those willing to take a poll, we give more weight to respondents from demographic groups that are underrepresented among survey respondents, like people without a college degree. You can see more information about the characteristics. You have to go, here's the sample. I mean, waiting on it's how they waited on registered voters. Oh, this is very, very complicated. Here we go. Um, unweighted gender, they have more men than they weighted men, race, how they weighted everything, how they came up with it. You know, so there's a lot of cooking that goes on in all these kind of debates. I'm sorry, polls. So you got to really dial down. You got to spend a lot of time trying to understand. If I'm going to oversimplify, you know, sometimes they may have interviewed, let's say Kamala Harris was up by two, but they... Uh, out of 100 people, they interviewed 52 Democrats. So then really that's like an effective tie, if you get what I'm saying. You know, 15% of the interviews self-reported as Hispanic were conducted in Spanish, 23% of the weighted interviews. So they gave them more value. Why? I don't know. They're trying to, you know, paint the best picture they possibly can. Ultimately, you still have a, a sampling plus or minus three percentage points. So there's a margin of error. So Trump could be up four or Trump could be down two. So you, I don't know why liberals suddenly are worried about polls. It's probably because suddenly they're, they had one, actually two of the last four polls, two of the last three, three of the last four technically are either tie or have Trump ahead. We're going to see a lot more after the debate. Um, and then you had this poll data. Now, again, I'm telling people, don't get excited about this. You, you, you remember, you act at all. I don't care if the polls say Trump's up 20. There's a real reason politically why you might lie about that because it would keep Trump voters home, right? So no matter what the polls say, you go and vote, you vote Trump, you get a friend to vote Trump, you tell your friends and family to vote Trump. If you go to, you know, tailgates for number four, trump.com, you find out how to talk to people about it. But then you have 538, which, of course, a lot of people on the right are passing around. Just remember this. 538, Nate Silver predicted Hillary Clinton would win in 2016. Trump, according to this, now has a nearly 64% chance of winning the election. Pennsylvania, Trump up 64 to 36 Michigan, Trump up 54-46. Wisconsin, Trump up 53-47. Arizona, Trump up 77. North Carolina, Trump up 
Georgia, Trump up 68-32. Nevada, Trump up 61-39. Poly market shows Trump at 52-46, which I think is pretty close to what it is right now. Yep, 52-46. It literally just ticked back down. Trump's eh, close to 53%, but not really. So there's a four or five point spread there. These polls, the liberals are very, very concerned. Donald Trump pulls ahead of Kamala Harris in a major poll assigner campaign is fizzling. We talked about that either. New York Times, Trump and Harris are neck and neck after summer of upheaval. I mean, these two polls alone, I mean, Nate Silver um, and, you know, Polymarket. And again, it's just directional. You're all going to be furious when Harris wins. Yeah. Nate Silver is owned by Polymarket. Polymarket is owned by Peter Thiel. So there you go. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, shenanigans. Liberal poll pollster predicts blowout victory for Trump ahead of N ABC debate. I'm not, I wouldn't make any predictions until after the debates. Um, you know, if the debate is like a coin flip or Trump has some moments, Kamala has some moments, it's going to come down to the wire. If Kamala completely melts down like Joe Biden did, that could be it. The election could be over that night. He now predicts that Donald Trump will get 312 electoral college votes um, versus 226 for Harris and a no toss up map. The figure is a massive upswing on the 227 Trump secured against Biden. And I mean, you need 270 to win, folks, uh, against Biden in 2020 and in even an improvement over his victory against Hillary Clinton when he romped to the White House with 304 electoral college votes. I mean, it's just one more state probably, you know, in this model. So, again, Nate Silver is just another pollster. And what do we always say? Polls don't really matter. Benny Johnson, New York Times poll, Donald Trump outperforming 2016 and 2020 in the Midwest. Who was up 4.3 in 2016, up 2.1 in 2020, and 2011, he's up, or 2024, he's up 11. That's bigly up 54, 43. But again, these are just polls. Trump could have a meltdown on the debate stage. You never know. But I do enjoy uh, this polling data is pretty shocking. Trump takes narrow lead in New York Times poll and fears Kamala honeymoon is collapsing. They're worried, and what I would argue is it seems unlikely that the debate is going to help Kamala Harris, but you never know. The only thing I can tell you is I'll be live streaming it tomorrow night, both on Rumble and Quartercast. Both channels will be linked in the pinned comment down below. Make sure you subscribe or follow. We'll hang out together and watch the what is sure to be very entertaining 90-minute debate. I'm sure it'll be totally fair, too. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you have a like on it. If you haven't yet, subscribe or follow, and we'll talk to you again real soon.